what we feel as though is our best modus operandi. What is our attack for this season? And we're, and we're bearing that out in camp. The one thing that is really abundantly clear is that Lance is a whole lot better than where he was last year. Uh, mm -hmm. He's completed for the camp about almost 70% of his passes. Last year in camp, he completed about 55%. And mm -hmm. um, I want to share the screen here. Let me show one thing that I asked him a question yesterday. Let me see if I can figure this out. Yeah, here we go. Um, this is from yesterday. And we had a presser, and if I forgive the uh, microphone in the middle and the bad cropping. Normally, these guys are in the studio, in the uh, auditorium. Yeah, you guys are kind of like in some type of amphitheater. Yeah, well, no, what, they were having a meeting in the auditorium, so we had to kind of move over, um, not to the auditorium. But I asked, I asked Trey about a, a throw that he made, and he had a great answer. Let me see if I can play this for you. Okay. Went through that exact same route, maybe four, five, six times. Is that? Something where you just like, hey, I make a mistake. I want to kind of conquer it and and correct it and, and try to rectify it before moving on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, most of the throws, um, if it's something I didn't feel super comfortable with, then that would be the, the case. It's just weird look. It felt like he got his didn't get his head around right away, and I should just let it go. I didn't trust it, um, so that's all I mean. So yeah, definitely just trying to up oh. to, to keep it better. We play. The let me play that one more time. Trey, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, after pra in practice, you missed a throw to Debo, and then I noticed after practice, it seemed like you you went through that exact same route, maybe four, five, six times. Is that something where you just like, hey, I'm, if I make a mistake, I want to kind of conquer it and and correct it and, and try to rectify it before moving on? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, most of the throws, um, if it's something I didn't feel super comfortable with, then that would be the, the case. It's just weird look. Felt like he got his didn't get his head around right away, and I should just let it go. I didn't trust it, um, so that's all me. So yeah, definitely just trying to continue to, to keep it better. Yeah, so that that was and and you know, unfortunately, you know, it's a you, the audio wasn't great on that because uh, we're you know we're out outside of our studio. But basically, he had had a throw the other day where he just had Debo off to the side and on the right side, and he, he airmailed him. And Debo didn't get a hand on it. And then the practice ends. Everybody run, runs off the field. And Trey runs that same route. You know, runs that, you know, he didn't run the route. He had another receiver running in the route. He basically did that same play. And he did it, coach, like six times, seven times in a row. And right. to me, it's that kind of thing that's going to make him eventually a really good quarterback. Because we all make mistakes. And then it's like, do you ignore them and just go, ah, screw it? Or do you sit there and go, no, I got to get this right? And he's like, you know, hell bent to not just, you know, he knows he's going to make mistakes, especially on some of the short stuff. But can he, can he keep working at it? Can he keep working at it? And to me, the next day and since then, he's thrown the ball better. Now he still is going to miss an occasional short throw, but um, when he's thinking about it, when he lets it rip, he's throwing it better than any of the the other quarterbacks. But when he's got to throw a little touch and timing, to me, that's his biggest challenge between him and the starting job is can he throw a touch and timing consistently and when he's kind of crossing off these boxes and working at these things that's to me a great indication of why he's going to get there you know and i don't know if it's going to be in week one week five if it's going to be week 10 if it's going to be next year i don't know but he is going to get there in my estimation and and that's why he's going to get there what did you think of that right. cut from him? I know it was kind of hard to hear. No, no, no. I heard it perfectly, Larry. Uh, I, I, I'm encouraged. Um, it's what you want to hear from a backup quarterback. Um, it's what you want to see from a young backup quarterback trying to find his way in the league, right? So, Trey, all of the superlatives have been, have been documented about Trey ad nauseum. But this is the type of stuff that we've been pining to hear about, right? The day-to-day -day work ethic. You know, what are you what are you bad at and what are you getting better at and what can we track from start to resolution and what are the milestones in place that we can pick up? And this is a milestone, right? Trey, it's been documented that Trey has a hard time making the easy look easy, right? And also, let's just look at Trey from a backup quarterback perspective. If Trey's, if Brock's the starter, right? right. I tend to believe being a Niners fan that all three of these guys are going to end up playing. Right. Possibly even Kyle, Kyle Allen. We might snatch him off his lazy boy in February. Who knows? Right. But 
what I'm saying is, is that when you do get a backup quarterback, most of the time, backup quarterbacks are coming into hostile situations, right? A la Brock Purdy, right? You're coming in the middle of the game most of the time. Sometimes you may be starting a week or on, on short weeks notice, or you maybe only get one week to get prepared. So this mentality, this trajectory that I'm seeing from Trey is what you want is what you want out of a backup. You want him to prepare like he's the starter, work on yourself, get better, right? And those are the things that uh, Trey is going to have to keep ingratiating into his game in order to stay viable in the NFL as a professional quarterback. Um, the draft status thing is over, and I like the fact that you can see that he's moving through as a pro, right? He's not, he's actually working on his game. So, you know, to, 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 pick, to get back to the backup um, scenario, if Trey comes into a game in a backup situation, we know that some of the first thing that Kyle's going to do is start throwing all of that dink dunk make the easy look easy getting them ingratiated and warming them up if trey can't make that stuff look routine right styles make fights this isn't an offense that's going to be shaped to his skill set this is an offense that's already shaped right so with that being said if trey can't get over those hurdles in this offense he's always going to struggle in this offense he's always going to be critiqued in this offense right because short to intermediate passes especially timing short passes is a staple in this offense and you can't complain about what you would rather it be but that's just what it is right and if and i like the fact that trey's starting to own it and he's starting to understand that hey this is the fight that i'm fighting right now this isn't the perfect scenario but in order for me to show worth I got to play the game. You can't sit back and complain about the rules the whole time. So I, I like that he's getting this done because I do agree with you. Trey Lance in San Francisco is a completely different quarterback. If he can make those routine throws um, like it's nothing, right? If he can make those short to intermediate throws on time, as far as San Francisco is concerned, he's Joe Montana. But until he does that, he's a backup, no matter what was spent on him. So he, um, I'm glad that he's working on it, but hey, the jury's still out. He's still no he's gotta go out and do it. There's another angle on this thing, and I want to play one other cut here for you. This is going to be a cut off of an interview that I did yesterday. Now, Flav's got his take on it, but here's Matt Barrows. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Matt Barrows is a fantastic Lance, guy, a fantastic I think that, I here, think here that Lance. Um, still is struggling from time to time with the layups. I mean, there was one in the move the ball drill. He rolled to his right, had an easy throw, just a, a simple throw. This, this is a throw that Larry Kruger could have completed. And he just left it short. <laughs> like um, like he, he still doesn't really have a feel for, you know, when you're, when you're moving on your own and you already have some momentum going, um, what, uh, what you the need to do. And, and my thought was that in, in the past, he's really kind of thrown that ball too hard. Uh, and this time he went in the opposite direction, just had nothing on it. And it bounced in front of the receiver. And I saw uh, uh, a bunch of uh, players on the sidelines sort of shaking their head after that. That was an easy one. That was a layup. So that is the part that kind of makes me kind of that's the other side of this is what are the players expectations i think the players really like trey um but i didn't and you know that surprised me because what i didn't see that i didn't see what maddie referred to there as the players kind of going ah you got to make that um right. but what i what i really love is i love the fact that you got you gotta you got you know this is a guy who's getting a lot better um 